Hello, I'm going to do a presentation on circuit minimization using Carnot maps. Now, firstly, I'm going to uh, just demonstrate how to use a, or go over on kind of assuming you know how to form a Boolean expression like like these from a from a truth table. I will we'll recap it very quickly, uh, and then we'll look at how we sort of we we might try and optimize or minimize the circuit, I should say. So if you look at just first the top four rows, and uh, this is a MUX, so actually I will, before I even do that, I'm going to recall the idea of a MUX. So the idea of a MUX, if I set S to be 0, then the output will follow A. right? So if S is 0, the output follows A, and it doesn't matter what B does. If uh, I change S to be 1, then the output will follow B. Okay, so S is 1, the output now follows B. Okay, so how do we uh, construct a a Boolean expression like this for for using the truth table. We, we just look at where the ones are. So we have a one here, and all of these, and I'm because this one here is just the top half. Okay, so I look at the top half first, and I say, okay, so here, um, where have I got this out of one? Well, it's when S is not on, A is on, and B is on. So not S and A and B. Well, that should give us a one. All of those anded together should give us a one or the other way, or here I can look at this row uh, not S and A and B. I'm just going to put my little magic wand on. Alright, so we're looking at that row okay we see we see that. And then we could keep going okay, uh, I've chosen to work on the top off for a little bit first, we could go here and say okay where do we get the one here, well, we get that when it's S and not A and B okay but first of all let's see if we can minimize this a bit and I've just used a distributive law, which basically means if you see things that are the same in the, throughout, so I can see here on both sides of this or, this is the same, I can, I can pull that out. So you can think of it very much like, uh, those of you who have done any maths, it's very much like factorizing brackets, what's the same can come out. So I take out what's the same, and I'm left with these. Now, then I notice, oh hang on, but not B or B, well that's always going to be 1, so it's effectively the same. This whole top half of the table is effectively just the same as not S and A. Now I could go through and uh, do the bottom half in a similar way. I could say, okay, uh, well it's one when I've got S and not A and B, and I get a one. But if I just look, uh, and I already know this really, that it's just basically when S is on and B is on that I get a one here. So even without repeating that whole process, you can very and if you you could do a similar on the bottom half, you could do a similar sort of thing. You could write the whole lot out and then you could pull something out, you could uh, factorize it or use a distributive law um, which I just tend to think about what's similar to factorization in maths <coughs> think of the or as being a plus and the and as being multiply and if it's the other way around, if you have an and here and two ors there then just think of, uh, think of it the other way around, think of the and as being the plus and then you have an exact analogy with, uh, with maths there um, yeah so I could do a similar thing there or I could just note it just by looking at the table, it's only on when S and B are on, so I can just or it with that. Okay, so uh, let's flick on. So, okay, what is a Carnot map? Well, we've seen that the truth table, the Carnot map, uh, is just really a different way of representing it, where I have uh, I have uh, two sort of two-dimensional arrangement here of A and B, um, and then these are going to be my outputs. So I just put the output here, the output there, and so on and so forth. There's one thing to realize whenever you move horizontally or vertically, if you move horizontally here from one square to the next square, only one variable is allowed to change. So if I go from here to here, it doesn't matter what the output is, but only one variable is allowed to change. So from here to here, A changes to not A. All right? From there to there, B changes to not B. And it has to be the same if I go around. So if I go out here and in here, well then uh, what's changing? Not A goes to A, but B does stay the same. Assuming if we go vertically if I come out here then I, I think about coming back in the top <coughs> well A stays the same it's uh, not a, uh, sorry it's A, I, A is on there but uh, B changes okay so on we go and these are just, I've just gone through here and looks at the various different possible uh, Carnot maps so two variables would be like that and if you think about it two variables are going to be four because you've got uh, two inputs so every two inputs can be in two different states so it's two to the power of two Okay, similarly with three inputs, it would be two to the power of three, it would be eight. And that's one way you can do a three variable Carnot map, and you can, if you want to, you can just pause the video and double check that every time you go, well clearly every time I go down vertically, things stay the same apart from C, which changes. If 
go from here to here. Well, what changes from there to there? B. Okay. Clearly, the uh, A stays the same, not A. C is still on. And you can check that out every other way. Maybe we'll just do one more. If I go from here to here, well, uh, C stays the same. Okay. B stays the same, but A changes if I go from here to here. Okay, so I think we've demonstrated that. And, uh, we'll just go through some other possible ways you can do a Carnot map with, with more variables. Okay, so four variables. It's very similar to the uh, three variable ones. If you look here and look there, you see a similar sort of on-off pattern. And then you have to repeat that down there. And again, you can uh, verify if you want that uh, wherever you go there, you're always going to be changing just one thing. You do five variables by considering basically two of these, one above the other. I get it a little bit difficult to visualize. You can't sort of flatten it out with five variables very easily. Um, I suppose you might be able to think of a way of doing it, but it, it wouldn't be very, very nice. Um, so two full variable maps, I think in one of these on top of the other, one would be, say, we've got the variable E, one would be the variable E on, the other one would be the variable E off. All right? I think six variables, It's uh, there are other, th other ways of doing this, so I'm told I've not actually looked them up, but if you want to, uh, why don't you learn about it and uh, put a video up like, I, like I've learned about this. Anyway, on to the next thing. Um, okay, so let's have a look at how Carnot uh, maps, act how we actually do this. This is just a, an example. So if I go back to my MUX, um, I've represented it here on a Carnot map. So for example, you can see when they're all on here. Okay, I've got uh, them all on. and. You can actually see very quickly because when it's uh, what do we want this to do? When it's off, okay, we follow A, right? So when S is off, we follow A. So when A is on, this S, uh, the output's on. Remember, this is output here, yeah. Uh, and when, uh, yeah. So when S is off, we do that. When S is on, we follow B. So the output is on when the Bs are on. A is a is on, S off, uh, on the output, yeah? So I think that makes sense. Well, it does make sense. Okay, so next one. Now, how, how could we... Now, the, the next thing to do once you've got your corner map and to minimize it is to form groups. I'm just going to form sort of rectangular groups. So you might hear say, well, I can form these two. You can also form these rectangular groups by basically going over, over edges. So you can put those two together and consider it to be a one by two rectangle. All right, so I could split this group up in that way if I just do that now. Right now, once you've got your groups, and I'll talk more about groups exactly how you do them in a moment. It's a sort of intuitive example to begin with. Once you've got your groups, um, just think what stays the same remains in the expression. Right. So if I look at this group, what's the same here? Well, the A's are the same. The S is the same. That's off. Right. Um, but the bees are changing, so ignore the bees, ignore the changing things. And then here we've got not S and A, because it doesn't matter about B, it's still on, so it makes perfect sense to do that as well. Okay. You change B, you do not change the output, alright? It only depends really, the outputs, all of those outputs only depend on A and not S, they will be on. Similarly here, if we look what changes, well the A changes, so we don't want to bother with that, but the S is the same and the B is the same. So you can very quickly get that expression that we saw before, okay, without having to go through all the, that big sort of Boolean expression and distributive law and everything else we just did. So you can see that was a bit quicker. Now we need some. We need to talk formally a little bit more about the, these groups. So group sizes should be one, two, four, eight, and they need to be rectangles, okay, or squares. The rectangles and squares are fine, but uh, you can't have uh, L shapes or T shapes or anything like that. Okay, groups need to be like that. Make groups as large as possible. You always need to make them as large as possible. Uh, construct as few possible groups provided D is obeyed. Uh, so you want to use as few groups as possible provided uh, every one has to be in a group. Yeah, so you don't group the zeros. Okay, you group the ones. I've sort of, I've kind of assumed you would guess that, but I think it's pretty explanatory. Uh, square should not be included in more than one group unless doing so. Yeah, so you're not going to include a one, a square with a one on it. A square, maybe I should have said that. Um, and it's doing so enables a small group to be replaced by a larger one. All right. So you don't want to overlap uh, these groups unless doing so uh, makes one of the groups bigger. Okay. So, right. 
So let's have a look at a more complicated example and just think about how we're going to form our groups and then we'll look at the expression. Okay. Well, I think if we look at this top one, um, well, it's clearly by itself. It can't link there. It can't link there. There's no way you can link that. So that's going to have to be by itself. Now, if we start thinking about, uh, clearly it's going to be a group here, and we're going to have to include, make it as big as possible. We would include all of those. All right. If you think about this one, well, do do I do I group it with this one to make a slightly bigger one? Yes, I would do because it replaces the small group, just the one by itself, with a bigger group. If I include it. Uh, I include it with that one there. I wouldn't go and include it with this one over here, although it, it is adjacent. Um, it's of size three, so you can't do that, right? Now we could clearly we can group those two together, um, but we could make that group bigger if we include these two. So you would include those two in uh, this group as well. And this one here has actually been included in three groups, okay? But every time legally and obeying the rules. All right. So let's have a look at what the groupings would look like. Yeah, so you can see one group by itself here, another group here, another group here, there, and round. So that's your groupings. Now all that really remains to do once you've got that is just to have a look and uh, say, well, what's this, and what's what's this group, and what's what's changing, and what's staying the same, and just keep things that are staying the same. What's staying the same here? A clearly staying the same. C is clearly not staying the same. Okay, D is clearly not staying the same. Right but B is the other thing that stands the same. So it should be clear that for this group, it doesn't matter what um, D and C are, all that matters is A and B. All right? If we have a look here, well, what's not staying the same? C is clearly not staying the same. Right? It's changing from one to the other. And in fact, as you go from there to there, you can see that A is also changing. The other two, the B, uh, yep, B is staying the same. And which one haven't I thought about? Yeah, D. D is also staying the same. So let's have a look and see if I've. Uh, what I'm telling you here is that this one should be what uh, A, not A, and B. This one should be D uh, because that's staying the same. What else is staying the same? Oh yeah, D and not B, right? So let's just have a look and see if that works out. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Uh, not B and D. Now, okay, the other ones, these I've put in here, I think you can, you know, now you've got the idea, you can see, well, what's what's changing, what's staying the same, I want to keep what's staying the same, well, C is staying the same, A is staying the same, but it's not A, yeah, and D is staying the same, so that stays the same, what does change, as you go from there to there, is B, so that is not included. And finally, with this one, well, you haven't got any choice, really, you just have to reference it by, well, it's A, B, not C, and not D. Okay, so there you go, that's the basics of doing a Carnot map and how they can be used to minimize your circuits. Okay, thank you for listening.